Anthony Richardson is an impressive guy. After a game like he had on Sunday, there are some who would have been a little bit full of themselves despite the fact that the Colts lost 29-27. He's not. He is a guy who sees himself needing to get better week after week after week and adhering to a process of improvement. We talked to him today. Really interesting, good stuff from Anthony Richardson. Um, no, uh, I learned that I could manage the offense out there, you know, just be able to help the team whenever I can, you know, I just manage the offense, help them get guys open. You know, just trying to do my job the best way I can, but, you know, each week, you know, in and out, just trying to master the plan so we can be ready for the game. How you feeling? No, I'm feeling good. Uh, the first day after the game, I was a little sore, you know, again, used to getting tackled again, but no, I'm feeling good now. Last week, they dominate the time of possession. How important is it for yourself and this offense to keep some drives alive and, and some nice drives in the game coming up in this Green Bay? Yeah, um, we noticed that, you know, during the game, you know, regardless of how explosive our offense is, we still got to give the defense time to, you know, recover, get their, their minds right, get their bodies right. We can't, you know, allow them to be on the field pretty much the whole game and, and have multiple three and out stops and, you know, just not being able to get the first down so they can rest up. So that's something we are thinking about as an offense, you know, making sure we can, you know, manage the game as well as as well as, you know, being explosive. Along those lines, the 43 plays, that's a, a byproduct of not converting the field. Like yeah, uh, a little bit of both, you know, because obviously we scored quick uh, some of the possessions, so that accounts for it as well. But also, you know, just trying to understand what we're trying to do in the game plan. You know, last week we were thinking about shot, shot, shots. You know, we got a little bit trigger happy with that, but you know, it's all good. We're gonna make sure we, we're mastering the plan and you know, doing something right for the defense. When you hit that first shot, the throw to Alec Pierce for 60 yards. I mean, after how long you've waited to get back to see it come together like that, just. Can you, can you kind of remember just the emotions you were feeling on that play? A bunch of excitement. You know, it's always good whenever Coach Shane dials up something and the, and the play actually works out there and the guys, you know, make plays for it. You know, so it feels good for us, you know, putting together the offense like that. But we're just trying to stack up the day, stack up the play, and just, just keep it rolling, honestly. When I mean, Shane calls that, that play in your, in your ear, I mean, do you get excited for it? Or what yeah, I, I definitely light up, you know, especially looking at the coverage, trying to see what they're going to give me. Sometimes he just said, forget about it, just, just let it rip, because we got guys that can roll, so I just got to give them a chance to give them a shot. You know, if, you get, if you get Josh Downs back, what's the impact he No, he's just another weapon for the offense. You know, we got we got a bunch of explosive guys, got a bunch of guys that can make moves with the ball in their hands. So I know Shane's going to dial up if JD's back. You know, he's going to make sure he gets his matchups and make sure everybody else gets open. And he was saying that um, he never wants to be a guy in the quarterbacks here like, oh, I could have had score here, I could have whatever. What do you see from him from a maturity standpoint? Should be no, as a quarterback, you definitely appreciate stuff like that because you know you have some guys that I want to get the balls as much as possible. You know, obviously it's a little tough when guys are getting open and you're missing them. You know, um, it hurts me a lot. You know, missing wide open guys like that. But you know, I appreciate him for just sticking with me and just trusting me because I trust him a lot and get open. I just got to deliver the ball to him. What are you looking forward to, to Lambeau Field? As we know the story about. One there, their fans. Give me your thoughts on this matchup this weekend. I'm pretty excited. You know, I hear a lot of stories. Uh, Joe told me a couple of stories about going there. He showed us a video of him walking through the tunnel and everything. So I'm excited. Uh, it's early in my career as well, so I definitely appreciate that. How glad are you to be playing there in September and not maybe you know December, knowing those conditions can be? Oh like man, you, you should know I'm excited, man, because I'm a Florida guy and I know it gets real cold there, and I don't want to be freezing my butt <laughs> off. So you know, I appreciate us playing them early. I mean, that's one of his superpowers. You know, he's a deep threat. He, he got wheels. You know, he can jump and go get the ball. So, uh, in our offense, that's one of the things we love for him and, and doing with him. So, you know, it's just a matter of me getting the ball to him, making him, you know, make his plays. With Alec on, on like, the intermediate short stuff, what have you seen from him on, on those routes as well? You know, Shane has uh, dialed up a few things for everybody to run certain routes, and everybody can run routes. All of our receivers have a really great route tree whenever when it comes to running routes. You know, uh, so scheming up the plays, obviously people know he's the deep threat. So just switching it up a little bit, getting him, because he can run as well. So just getting him the ball early sometimes, that means a lot. Shane had told us how you were just so cool. He, he really loves seeing you on the sidelines. You have a good play, a bad play, you're still the same type of person. Where does that come from and why is that important to you to make sure you do that when you can work out? Uh, just me. Just me knowing myself and knowing that uh, everything is not going to be perfect. You know, um, other guys on the other side of the field, they also pros. They're also pretty good at football. So, 
You know, it's just a matter of understanding that everything's not going to go my way, you know, regardless of if it does or not. I just got to, you know, stay calm for the offense and make sure I'm doing my job and just managing the game. Shane mentioned that there's a few plays they're going to ask to, to be looked at with you, some of the hits above the shoulder. Uh, just from your perspective, do you feel like you're being officiated fairly? Would you like to see maybe a little more attention to that? Uh, you know, I, I don't really necessarily have a comment on it. You know, I know I'm a big quarterback. I know some of the calls might not go our way. You know, which is cool. You know, uh, it's football. You just got to fight through stuff like that and just play regardless of what happens. That's Anthony Richardson, and I think it's really, really easy to look at 6'4", 255 pounds with 4'4 speed and an arm that can convey a ball on a dime 66.3 yards downfield. It's really easy to look at the physical traits and say, you know what, that's why he's achieved the success he had. That's why he was the fourth overall draft pick at the 2023 draft. That's why people get so enamored of him. I got to tell you, I really like his attitude. I really like the way he goes about his business. And I think that all those things combined, if he can stay healthy, he projects toward being an absolute freak, an absolute unicorn, both up here and in his body.